Welcome back to Nick Lines Comic Corner Classic Lesson Known Classic. This episode number 2751 and double shot number 2645. This one basically I have the final trade of a, tr of, a, of, a, of a whole series and a standalone trade. First up we have is Dr. Afra Volume 7 Dark Droids. This collect issues 32 to 40. Now, okay, so this is something common with bounty hunters. You're thinking, what is this book coming about bounty hunters? Well, their final trades basically deal with dark droids. And the fact both books got axed right after the story wrapped up. The reason? Don't know. At least bounty hunters was great all the way through, and it was an original series, and it made total sense to take place in that time period. Now, this is the second volume of Dr. Aphra. And this is something quite interesting that you may not know about, about this particular book for Dr. Aphra. This run lasted the same exact amount of issues as volume one. The only difference is it was the same writer for all 40 issues. The previous volume started with Karen Gillian on the writing. He was joined by Cy Spurrier. Karen Gillian left about halfway through the run, and the rest of the run is done by Cy Spurrier. And of course, they relaunched it with this. So, the first couple issues in here deals with her team up with Luke Skywalker. Well, actually, her kidnapping of him. And the reason why that she's doing this is to make up for the events of the Siskiyou Citadel. Which, uh, here's a fun fact about that story. That was ten years ago. Now, you're thinking, wait a minute. Uh, Nick, can you explain the Screaming Citadel? It was a crossover between Star Wars and Dr. Aphra. Uh, for Star Wars, it was not a good period of time when this event came out. The reason why? Because the artwork was under garbage. Like, anybody reads this, like, the backgrounds look really good, the aliens look really good, my point of contention of how the arc was bad was the human faces. They look terrible. And this somehow passed for artwork for Star Wars. You would have thought, oh, maybe John Cassis is on board. Nope, he left after the opening six issues. Like, I begged Marvel my reviews to. Big Marvel to do this. Remove Sal de Roca, who is an artist, and play with somebody else. He has still done good artwork since then, but my gosh, his artwork in the book was atrocious. And the wish is granted. When Karen Gillian left the book, he got replaced with Greg Pak, who took over as the writer for Darth Vader. Yes. But I'll talk more about that later. So. Mostly put, it just Dr. Alpha and Luke Skywalker team up to find this, to go to this jelly temple on this gas giant that turns to a prison. Now, when they arrive there, they run into two Jedi who I believe are reported dead during the Clone Wars. Uh, the end of the Clone Wars. Shock T and Asura Song. They were original characters created for the uh, Phantomist, the, the, the prequel trilogy. I believe Shock T and uh, Aurora Song did appear in Clone Wars, and not the Clone, well, not just the Clone Wars series. I remember, I remember that Aurora Song did appear in that in uh, Attack of Clones and appeared briefly in Revenge of the Sith, where she got killed by her own troops. Shock T, they never necessarily said what what happened with her. Like it was suggested in the lead scene that she was killed by General Grievous. But they cut that scene because they, the fly heard the, the fly heard behind the scenes the reason why they cut that scene and replaced it with the scene on the bridge because it made more sense to Kyle Jaggers on the bridge and in some hallway. Yeah, and they're here as holograms, but it's a good fun story for Luke Skywalker and then of course, like by the way, uh, the writer of course is Alyssa Wong. Arc by Mikhail Jung, uh, who basically does all the issues with, with uh, issues 36 37 with Jotham Morris. Yeah. And 
At, now, there's also a whole thing in here that you mentioned, not only Screaming Citadel in this two-parter, but they also mention uh, Hidden Empire, which was two events before Dark Droids. It was actually preceded Crimson Dawn. It was a great ripple effect. And it's a quick two-parter. And then, of course, Luke Skywalker goes on his merry way after this two-part storyline wraps up. It's like a two-part, actually, like a three-part story that got wrapped up. So, yeah, it was just Creature Kept at Jedi Prison. Of course, they found it like a yellow, yellow beam lightsaber. And then Luke is dropped off on Nether Prime. Of course, Luke says, steal something from Dr. Aphra. As Taylor for stunts from him during Scream of the Storyline. And that's the opening three issues of this book. Now, 35. Oh, by the way, the guy's name is Just Lucky. Yes. So, then we have Hut Town. Or Domina is with Lupin, uh, Lapin Tuck. I think this is probably her daughter or her niece. They don't say it's part of the family. And, of course, various members of the family. And she's like, ooh, ooh, look at this. Who robbed the Clone Wars and dumped this dumped this piece in the lab table? That's a good question. And my power is being taken. What happened? So we... First of all, design. You can age me. I'm in. Of course you are. Now come with me. So... And of course, like, ooh, mutual agreement. And Dr. Point so this is only your office. No, it's not. Leave us, Lepon. Yes, Lee Dharma. Lafra. Yeah, so... And of course, she dragged. Apparently, Dorma dragged Dr. Afford to her bedroom so they could have sex. Yep. And then here's kind of the weird thing it's like, yeah, that was like a one and done. It was like a one night stand, and you want to move on. It's like, no romantics up here, move on. I'm like, wow. Yeah, by the way, just like he had proposed to his girlfriend in the last that trade. So, yeah, and of course they're at like a like a nightclub, and and then she just finds some random girl who she just sleeps with, but then of course apparently like, I think basically that she sleeps with because she kisses her and then like very next day she's like gone. Then she gets up and, well, apparently this guy, woman is actually stealing from her. There's some snow climbing. I think they're at, I think they went to Hoth. Yes, I think they're back to Hoth here. Where they find, well, this is kind of basically her involvement in, in a way, of the Dark Droids storyline. Then we see, I think this is Leia, like, during the events of Hoth. They say, like, on the location, of course, at the warehouse. Uh, Manga is here. And, of course, like, they all admire her. And it's almost like, basically, like, the guy really wants her. But, yeah, and by the way, she apparently has joined the Rebel Alliance. Yeah, she joined the Rebel Alliance just after the events. Of, just basically, during the events, I'm to switch sides. Why? Because, basically, my guess is Dr. Alpha changed after they slept together. That's presumably what happened here. Yep. So, the droids are going nuts. And there's a flashback to one of the times, basically, Dr. Aphra slept with Maga. Yeah, one of the... I don't think it was the first time. Maybe one of, one of the times they slept together. So, basically, the last few issues they deal with this particular thing. Um, yeah, and... You could say indirectly Dr. Aphra is responsible. Well, the events of this book does kind of help set the events of Dark Droids. Of course, was attacked by her own droids. 
who apparently like take out these people, and of course, Mogger herself gets captured. Yep. Yeah, Blair this ring, and of course, basically, she gets captured, and she gets brainwashed. Yes. She gets brainwashed by the brainwashed droids because she's partially because she's cybernetic. Yeah, and then, of course, Sana teams up with, of course, Dr. Afro goes to Sana to go rescue her. And she's on Corellia. You're thinking, that planet seems familiar. What famous character from Star Wars from this planet? Han Solo. Yeah, of course, that's what he wants. So, they mentioned the events of the Sana miniseries. I don't think I reviewed that yet. I don't know if I have or not. Like, I was about to say Maga, and of course, then we see this. I don't know who this is, basically, they're half here. Then Maga's basically brainwashing the guy. And apparently, it's like he t she took him apart being brainwashed. And this all deals with the, the villain Scourge 1. So we have Just Lucky, Sana, and Dr. Aphra breaking to the facility uh, during events of Lair Portage of the Dark Droid series. And then they see Valance. The main character from the Bounty Hunters book, Lobot, who was us she's seen in Star Wars, and well, and of course Maga. Now, the kind of the weird thing is Vader was off in a different area of space dealing with with the droid stuff. While it seems like though, like Star Wars, Bounty Hunters, and uh, this book dealt more closely with the events of the main story. And this is basically them. You could say this is them witnessing the events of that story. And of course, all she wants is basically her girlfriend back. And of course, nail her down using the electronic using the electric tattoo that she's got. Which of course the series like Karen Gillian never bothered to explain where the heck she got these tattoos from. Just that she has them, and then of course use look look into her mind. Get okay, escape hatch. And they visit Doma. And Doma, of course, uses her own partial lightsaber. And, of course, basically, uh... And, of course, she's taken by the droids. And, of course, basically, Lupin is just taking out. And, of course, the whole thing with them is, like, they're... Okay, Arela is the one who... Um, is one who looked just like a post to in the last book. Like, so, they do choice in her. Dr. Everest thing is she just really wanted to save Maga, who's her girlfriend. Of course, apparently Sia's a girlfriend, too. Yep. So, they fight the droids. Take an alien free, free Dorma. Looks like you fly someplace. And apparently she's on a planet call, uh, called, called see an outer rim planet. And of course, like Nina Boo herself. And then and we lead into the final issue of the series, where it's like, oh, it's a look back at a lot of the events of the book, which I love the cover. And of course, like she wants. Of course, she's kissing her from the previous book, and she crashes on the planet. Now, here's the thing: Darwin does not tell Sana that she slept with Doctor Afra. Nope. My guess is because that was basically uh, a classified, probably classified matter. She probably wouldn't tell her that. And then, of course, we kind of. Tie a little bit with the events of the final issue of Dark Droids. Everything is slowly wrapping up here. Things in ruins. And then, of course, Maga and Sana. We have Maga kissing Sana's hand. Then we see Afra with this book. I guess, of course, she's an archaeologist. Oh, Sana's behind. Nope. Sana's by herself. Then she goes outside. 
And she says, I hate you, Sonic. Goes, yeah? Yes. Guess there's like, it's all your fault. Be fine. Listen. Yeah, and kisses her again. And I guess basically, like, manga is there. Oh, yeah. Ancient book. Galaxy Channels. Us. Corilla Lana Afra. Are you invited to join you in a lifetime of crime? Yeah, I am. And then we cut to uh, the basically the peerless. We have someone from Imperial Security Bureau talking to a bounty hunter and asking about Dr. Afra. And they're all chilling at this someplace. And they're all beating people up. And then we have this Revolution Tall Tales one shot where it's kind of. You, is this you think is this the book where you catch Doctor Afra? Uh, not really. It's just a story on Grace, where she's like looking for Doctor Afra, and that's. It seems like this book, basically the end of it, does set up another issue. But the series ended. Yeah, the series ended after only forty issues, and no annuals. Don't know why. Um, I found this book quite interesting. Uh, a lot of fun. You could say by reading the last issue, it's like, it's a good wrap-up, definitely. It does leave it open-ended, with a possible storyline of, of a bounty going out Dr. Avra. That might be interesting, but it probably won't happen in this book. Unless, of course, they decided to announce another Dr. Afra ongoing series. That's possible. That or they can probably continue this plot threat in the pages of Dark Fear, which I highly doubt that. And I highly doubt that continues in the pages of Star Wars. Now, obviously, the question is, where would this continue? Don't know. But my final thoughts on a Dr. Aphra second volume. Really interesting book, per se. I felt for the longest time this was the weakest of the four books. Because it wasn't just as interesting as, like, Vader, Star Wars, and Bound Enters. But that was it for the start of it, this volume. And later on, it got better. Much better. I do find it interesting, though, that Sana basically is in this book a lot. Sana Santos. Which, this is a character who was created by Jason Aaron. An original character who claimed when she first showed up, she was Han Solo's wife. And it turns out it was a lie. And it would just go back his money. And then, somehow, she connected to Dr. Afra. Yeah, this was a retcon for her. Yeah. Now, you're probably thinking, was, was this basically Jason Aaron's doing with this character? No. Was it Karen Gillian? Nope. It was Lisa Wong Retcon. She did that. But I do find this series quite interesting. I do like the ending of this. It is surprising, though, when Dark Droids wrapped up. Like, here's the thing when it comes to this era of Star Wars. We had, like, the first... Before the first relaunch of Star Wars under Marvel, we had two crossovers. Fair Down, which is a good crossover... And Scream and Scandal, which is not that good. And then, apparently, Marvel decided, no, we're, 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 we're going to stop doing Star Wars crossovers for a while. For about six years. Actually, about seven years. And then we had stuff like War of Bounty Hunters, Hidden Empire. Actually, Crimson Dawn, Crimson Empire. Dark Joys was the fourth one. Could it be the other one? It's possible. But I highly doubt being the scale was Dark Droids. I highly doubt it, but yeah, sad to see Dr. Africa after only 40 issues, which means as of now, there's only two books left. At least Vader, Vader, I've been loving by, by Greg Pak. It has been so good. Shaw Shaw himself does an excellent job with Star Wars, exploring aspects where we possibly in the future, which I do enjoy that. But sad we're not going to see Dr. Afra anymore. Yeah, sad for that. All right, next up is a book that. Uh, I bet some people were really curious me talking about this book. Steelworks. Yes. The book that's written by... Worf himself, Michael Dorn. I'm like, that's interesting. As far as I can tell, this is his very first comic. It's surprising Shaq didn't write this damn thing, even though he played the character. This book collects the entire miniseries of Steelworks, plus the backdoor pilot feature from Action Comics. Yeah, oh, by the way, um, Steel Engineer Tomorrow, that feature for Steel was by, uh, during a quack artwork by Yasmin Flores Montinas. Michael Dorn writes Steelworks with, um, 
Sammy Barassi, Beniti Kafas, and Mark Renner. Uh, the cover art is Alejandro Sanchez and Clay Mann. That is the cover art for this one. Uh, so first we start off with the steel feature. Yeah, basically this is like a lot of stuff for the events of Steelworks. So Steel has this press conference. Talk about basically like trust and irons. And then we have like John. I think, she, I think that's Connor. Connor working with Natasha. Basically show up the corporate structure here. Yeah, and then part two ends with appearance by Miss Terrific. And then of course they have a sparring match. And it has, oh yeah, apparently John Harris has got Hall of Hammers. Yes, Hall of Hammers. Uh, my guess is taken on the Hall of Armor from Marvel. Viceberg's house, and then eventually continue with Steelworks. Which, you gotta love this variant cover here. That's a clear, almost a clear homage to an old steel cover from the 90s. Don't, don't know which one, though. Um, I was explaining this to somebody when it comes to Steelworks. At the start of it, it, it reminded me a lot of damage control, minus the humor. And, yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, and of course, basically, you have steel, you have the flashback for, for steel in here. And Lana's in here too, and she's engaged to, to basically John. So the whole thing is now. Now my guess is that there was some dialogue here. It may have been. Uh, not sure if it was this book here, but there was talk about collateral damage. I remember in the opening issue. My guess is they must have expunged it when we talk about somehow superheroes are responsible for collateral damage. Also, they have this guy called Bilbo. They have came about that my guess is is because the issue got some flack for it so they expunged it from the trade because it didn't happen in action comics they happened remember heaven steel yeah so they have references to the, re the rebirth era with keenan kong steel superwoman yeah love is here of course, Lion's here too. And the whole thing is about these guys who are, who, I think it's some Amtech, that was the company that Stu used to work for. And it's basically them having, it, they're the main bad guys of this book. It's basically Amtech versus Steelworks, the whole miniseries. And they're trying to take it down. Me. And also, I'm sure Fantasia probably doesn't like the fact he's here. Uh, Jay Nakamura. The character from the Superman Son of Cal series. Yeah. Which, uh, by the way, he does not have any interaction with, with John in this book. There's none. No mention of it. It's like, my guess is because some people didn't like the aspect of John Kent. Like, there was a cameo by him in the Avengers of John Kent miniseries. But this is like the only appearance by him. My, my guess is because... The reception for this character was pretty negative. So it's like, yeah, let's not mention anything related to this character at all. Or if he, he and John are still dating or not. And I mentioned by the anniversary of Doomsday's defeat. Yeah. At one point in the books, uh, Lana Sue and Powers act up in the book. But... This book, like, it's like basically like they decided to alter some, some of the stuff in here related to uh, the John Henry Irons. Hear that? Well, I can tell of the Axomics one. It seems like they, they altered the either they they edit out some of the dialogue or they just cut it out because all the mention about collateral damage, the fact it's even superheroes. Uh, yeah, my guess is Dorm must have given us some flack for that, so. DC was like, yeah, this is not a good idea to put in the comic book. Like, people don't like the fact about this. That they probably didn't like the comment. So, my guess is when the trade came out, it was expunged. Because I remember it being the book. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it's the end of issue number three has this happen. Uh, Lana, basically, her super power is going crazy.
But don't worry, it gets back under control by the end of the issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, John's one of the company, which I'm curious. How do you get the money to basically finance his own company? Maybe he bought some stock in Amtech, or maybe they gave him a, some, some, something. Maybe uh, maybe John. I'm not sure exactly who he gave him the idea to build his company. Yeah, of course, find Jared Robin here. But if you look past the opening issue, the book itself is really good. Uh, and Dorn does an excellent job. And of course, the Supers are in here too. Um, yeah, it leads to the final issue, which I love this 90s variant cover here. Which I was trying to cover, like, wow, that is 90s. Because we have Azero Batman in the middle. We have Nightwing on the on the right. On the left, we, on the on the right, we have uh, that's Linda Danvers, the Peter Davis Supergirl. Um, Kyle Rayner, Connor, Tim Drake, not not the one who's by the straight one. Uh, Connor Hawk, Bloodhawk. Uh, believe it or not, that guy there, that's actually uh, Guy Gardner. Yeah, I'm I'm going to zoom here. Uh behind Bloodwing. That's Cassie's hand mark on the cover. We also see Cass we also see uh Cassie Kane, Jade, Impulse. Yeah, I love this cover. And some of you are thinking, "Man, I wish they brought back this era." I wish too. Oh yeah, we see the back where we have John beating up this robot and behind him in the background is Supercorp. Yep. But yeah, the mini series is really good. I thoroughly enjoy this. And of course, yeah, the fact they're getting married and and they say Steel's venture continue in Steelworks and beyond continue in Axomics and Greenlander War Journal. Hmm, interesting. We'll find out when that first day comes out. Oh, this is interesting. I I didn't realize this. I'm looking at the back of the trade here, but uh, apparently uh, the voice of Steel from the Superman animated series plus Michael Dorn. I didn't realize that because the only character I know he ever voiced ever in animation was when he voiced Ronan the Accuser from Superhero Squad. Him voicing Steel? That's interesting. But I'm going to give Steelworks a 9 out of 10. Dr. Alpha, a 10 out of 10. Okay? So yeah, that's it for the view. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications, and do not dislike button. Next up, Mashuku Tensai. Okay? And then as of right now, I have one more comic corner left to go. I might have another one, but who knows? Okay? Next video. Bye.